coin toss and will receive. The Saints have won the last two matchups, but have yet to win here in Texas Stadium. Ken Willis, the only rookie free agent on the Dallas squad, will be kicking off out of Kentucky. Not a particularly strong leg at all. 41 kickoffs, not one touchback. And Gil Finnerty and Vince Buck. There's Gil Finnerty back deep for the New Orleans Saints. A wet day here in Irving, Texas. Good football weather indeed, and we're underway. Finnerty from the one. Across the 20. And Finnerty finally dragged out of bounds by Ron Francis. So the Saints will start with excellent field position, a 32-yard return. Steve Walsh returning to Texas Stadium for the first time since the trade, September 25th, making only his seventh start as a Saints quarterback. And the offensive line protecting him, one of the best in the NFL, big and strong, anchored by Stan Brock, the right tackle, number 67. Craig Hayward tearing up the league the last few weeks. And a good pair of wide receivers. First and 10 for the Saints. On the ground, Hayward. And Hayward ahead for about four yards. And the defense that the Saints will be facing, Randy. For Dallas, a kind of a light defensive line. The highlight there, Daniel Stubbs, newly acquired from the 49ers this year. And as far as the linebackers are concerned, they're very, very solid. The star, Eugene Lockhart, in the middle. He makes a lot of tackles. Defensive backfield, keep an eye on those corners. Holt and Hendricks. They'll be tested by Steve Walsh in the play action early. Second and six, eye formation right. Mays and Hayward with the backs. Walsh hands off. And Mays, gang tackle. Leading the charge, Eugene Lockhart but a gain of four on the play. We'll bring up a third and two. Eugene Lockhart, number 56. Ruben a nice one-two punch between Hayes and Mayward. Exactly, New Orleans wants to run the ball, James, and according to Steve Chapolo, the right guard for the Saints, he says this, the offensive line has told each other we have to get at least six or seven yards on first down. Very key for the Saints, a lot of yards on first. Third and two. Three tight ends for the Saints. Turner in motion. This is Hayward. Strung out. Dropped behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of two on the play. Excellent aggressive job by the Dallas defense. And Dean Hamill, number 78 for Dallas, working against Steve Trapillo, the right guard, drove through and caused Hayward to bounce it outside. Craig Hayward, though he has the strength, to go inside and has the speed to go outside, you want him running laterally. Watch it right here. He's going sideways. You want Hayward going sideways. Great job by Hamill. Tommy Barnhart on to punt for the Saints. He could very well have been the MVP in their victory last week over the Falcons. Back deep, Derek Shepard for the Cowboys. Played with the Saints last season. And Barnhart with a decent one from the 14, Shepard. Dropped at about the 25, so about an 11-yard return stopped by Benny Thompson. He is by Troy Aikman, second-year quarterback at the helm for the Cowboys, making his 24th start. And a big physical run blocking offensive line, not as effective pass blocking. Running game anchored by Emmett Smith. And Michael Irvin really coming into his own the past few weeks. First and ten for the Cowboys. All at the 26. On the ground, AJ. And Tommy AJ. Ahead for about three. And the defense of the Saints. And that defensive line for the Saints, their specialty, stop the run. Martin, Goff, and Wilkes. The linebackers, these guys are all pro bowlers, and Swilling and Jackson like to get after the quarterback from the corners. And a steady defensive backfield, Toy Cook, the right cornerback, has been tested a lot by offenses. The spot of the ball indicates only a one-yard gain. 
A second and nine situation. Novacek and Awalt, the tight ends. And Emmett Smith. Ahead for two. And Jimmy Johnson really pleased with the play of this young man. Said he's all that we were hoping for, Randy. Exactly. Emmett Smith has had a great year so far running the ball and setting up this Dallas offense. This is the kind of position Dallas does not want to be in third and seven, third and eight, because Pat Swilling and Ricky Jackson just pin back their ears and come after Troy Aikman, who's the most sacked quarterback in the NFL. Specifically 35 times, and this is a third and seven situation, Randy. Six defensive backs in, Vinny Thompson and Vince Buck for the Saints. Darrell Johnston, the lone back. Here comes the press. Complete. And Jay Novacek up near the first down marker. That's enough for the first down. Vaughn Johnson on the tackle. Troy Aikman told me yesterday the Saints like to bring their safeties up and blitz. I've got nobody to account for him. The key to that. Watch the back or the tight end coming in motion and coming down. He's the guy Troy has to go to hot. As soon as he sees the blitz, he knows the tight end is now my hot receiver. First and 10, ball at the 37 of Dallas. Just underway here in the first quarter. No score. Smith, the ball carry. And Emmett Smith showing good, strong leg movement. And Randy. The story on him as Gene Atkins runs him out of bounds is that he is awfully powerful downstairs. Strong set of legs. And you'd normally think, hey, if the guy's got strong legs, that means he's hard to tackle by the legs. Wrong. You saw that the attempt was made as a shirt tackle, a shoulder tackle. The power of those legs prevents people from throwing him off balance and throwing him down by the jersey. Seven yards picked up on the play. Second and four. Smith. Vaughn Johnson limiting him to just one yard gain on the play. Randy, we've talked so much about the, the play of the linebacking core of the Saints. You really like the play of the inside guys as well, Mills and Johnson. Especially Mills and Johnson. Those are the real old-time, hard-nosed football players on this Saints team. You see Von Johnson there. You see his head in the huddle. He and Sam Mills pursuit of the ball, and they fill the backside gaps better than any other inside tandem in the NFL. They get after running backs. Third and three. Ball marked at the 44 of Dallas. Escapes the sack, incomplete. And Vaughn Johnson had a sack right in his hands, but a good escape move by Troy Aikman. And Randy, you've talked so often about not trying to tackle high. Especially when you're getting a big physical quarterback like Troy Aikman. Watch Vaughn Johnson coming through here. here. He'll completely engulf Troy Aikman when he gets to him. The blitz is effective. It's a check blitz. Von Johnson saw the back blocking, so he came in as a blitz and hit him high. You can't get a big quarterback around the shoulders. Get him around the leg. Mike Saxon on the punt for the Cowboys. Vince Buck from the nine. Turns the corner and run out of bounds by Vincent Smith. So an excellent return, an 18-yard return. Cowboys with good position. First and ten for the Saints at their own 26. Brent Perryman in motion. Hayward. And Craig Hayward for no gain on the play. Tackling led by Eugene Lockhart. Assisted by Jack Del Rio. Bring up a second and ten. Eugene Lockhart last year. 222 tackles. Setting the team record. And Randy, I think the point to make as far as the AFC is concerned, only two teams are out of the picture, that being Cleveland and New England. If you take a look at the wild card scramble there, it's going to be a battle. You're the only two teams in the entire NFL that are out of the playoff scramble. Hayward, the lone back. Walsh to pass. Complete to John Tice. Tice loses the ball. Fumble. And it looks like Tice recovered it. 
and enough for the first down. So a lucky break for the Saints. Well, Tice will get one less Christmas present this year because he just got one back. That was a poor play on his part, fumbling the ball, and the ball was kicked right back into his hands. Let's take one more look at it here. You watch Tice coming from his right tight end position come across the field. Saints love crossing patterns. He'll have possession. He's down, both feet down. The fumble is caused, and the ball is loose. Now, he should have no chance at it. There's no way he should get near it, but Hendricks knocks the ball right back into his hands. Here, one more time. Right at the end, Washington causes the fumble, number 37, and then the gift is offered back. Amazing looking at how that left leg of his was twisted. We'll check on his status when we come back. Good sign as you take a look at John Tice, who walked off under his own power during the commercial break and being examined there on the sidelines. Knee injuries can be tricky. You know, we've seen Dalton Hilliard for the Saints and Roger Craig from the 49ers tear posterior cruciates and not really know it at the time. There's so many intricate little things inside that knee. So Tice is out. Greg Scales is in. First and ten for the Saints. Eric Martin in motion. Hayward. Dallas's aggressive defense continuing to do a nice job. Danny Newman leading the charge, stopping Hayward, fourth-year player out of Nebraska. Two-yard run by Craig Hayward. Tony Wise, the offensive line coach, going over things with his tackles and tight ends, making sure everything's all right. Those are the pictures being signaled down from the side from the uh, booth upstairs. Second and eight. Three wide receivers. Martin and Perryman to the near side. Hayward finds a hole and runs ahead and runs into Jack Del Rio. Four-yard pickup by Craig Hayward. And Hayward is the kind of guy who, I guess, Randy, like most running backs, warms up the longer and the more he carries the ball. Exactly. Steve Trapillo told us yesterday, says, hey, Craig Hayward has to get hit five or six times. Then he gets a smile on his face, a little bounce in his step. He starts enjoying himself. He goes, this guy needs punishment. He's got to get a little punishment to get happy. <laughs> Third and four. Turner to the near side. Martin and Perryman to the top of your screen. Walsh, the pass, looking for Finnerty. Has him for the first down. Finnerty. And he runs out of bounds back at about the 39. So Gil Finnerty with the pass reception, 19 yards on the play. Very well conceived play by the New Orleans Saints here because they bring Gil Finnerty and drag him behind the rest of the receivers. We don't see him come out of the backfield, but he's right behind the receivers. Now it's a case of poor tackling and good positioning by the New Orleans Saints wide receivers. They weren't blocking everybody, but they were just getting in people's way. 5.34 remaining. Let's see where he steps quarter. out. Right here, right there, out of bounds. In Dallas territory, Walsh back to pass. Going up top for Hobie Brenner, and it's incomplete. Jack Del Rio providing the coverage. Jack Del Rio. And, Randy, it's, it's pretty easy to see, again, how conservative, I guess is the proper word, the game plan is for New Orleans to keep the confidence high for Steve Walsh. Well, Steve Walsh feels that the Dallas Cowboys are going to blitz him a lot on first and second down and fake blitzes on third. You want to give a young quarterback a lot of pressure. You want to give him something to think about and make him throw the ball in the bad parts of the field where you can get an interception. Second and ten. Ball at the 39 of Dallas. 5.20 remaining in the first quarter. No score. Mays. And Ruben Mays with an excellent run of about seven yards. We'll call it six. Stopped by Danny Noonan. And what Dallas is doing defensively on first and second down so far is they're crowding seven, eight, nine guys up near the line of scrimmage. They're telling Steve Walsh from the New Orleans Saints, we know you want to run the ball. We're up here. Come on, let's see if you can do it. Third and 
four. Ball at the 33. Three wide receivers. Hayward, the lone back. Walsh overthrows the intended receiver, Hobie Brenner. Now a case of happy feet and a little too quick and a not pass on the part of Walsh. That was not a bad pass, James. I think he was throwing that ball away. He was getting it up over where everybody else would have a chance to tick it and knock it where somebody could intercept it. Everybody was covered. That's a smart move then. And this is well within Morton Anderson's range. This will be about a 51-yard field goal. Anderson feels in this stadium he's good for about 56, and the Saints are going for it. Fourth and four. Hayward. First down. Five-yard run by Craig Hayward. And Randy, there looked to have been a mix-up, a little confusion between Walsh and Hayward, but it worked out for the best. It was more of a lot of confusion because of all the sound. The Saints coming in here knew there'd be a, tr be a problem with the sound. It's sold out. It's a noisy stadium when you get a lot of, lot of people in here. Took them a while to snap the ball. This is the pan plan play. That's supposed to be a draw. Good call by the Saints coaches. First and 10 from the 28 of Dallas. Two tight ends for the Saints. Perryman in motion. Hayward, the ball carrier. Strung out nicely by the Dallas defense. A loss of one on the play. Jim Jeffcoat, eighth-year player out of Arizona State. The right end dragged him down. That was the whole right side of that defense, defense for the Dallas Cowboys. It was Jeffcoat, and it was Del Rio, and Lockhart coming from the middle linebacker. They've got all these guys up close, and they are going to challenge the Saints to run the ball right at them. Ball at the 29 of Dallas. Second and 11. High formation. Walsh to pass. Complete to Scales. And Scales power driving his way. And pushing Ken Norton out of the way in the process. An important thing that the Saints lose when they don't run the ball well early is their ability to pull defenses up with play action. Dallas is playing up close. They're saying, come on, try and run it. And they're not buying on the play action. They're guessing correctly. Three yards picked up on a play. We'll bring up a third and eight situation. Four wideouts in for the Saints. Walsh loses it and picks it up. And way short. They're calling that an oh, incomplete. First down. Incomplete. They're going to call that Arm an incomplete going forward. pass. Tony Tolbert alertly reacting and dropping him. And Randy, again, the field is wet, so some grip problems there. Well, I kind of like it when the field gets wet. That's kind of a football player's kind of day. Gets all the glamour guys, the guys with all the wristbands and the towels on their waist. They can all go to the sideline. You know, women, children, wide receivers, go to the sideline. See, watch Steve Walsh's right arm. See him go forward like that? He was trying to pull that pass down. With the ball dropped out, it was a forward pass. Morton Anderson on to attempt a 43-yard field goal. Ends up. And it's good. So Morton Anderson has scored in 106 consecutive games. And the Saints are on the scoreboard first. Eight up nearly seven minutes off of the clock, leading to that Morton Anderson 43-yard field goal and gets set now for the kickoff and one of the best special teams in the league. One of their specialties is time of possession and getting time off the clock. Another one, covering kickoffs. These guys get down with a vengeance, and a lot of it's the hang time that Morton Anderson gets on his kickoffs. Averages about 4.2 seconds. Anderson with the high one. From the four, James Dixon. Dixon takes it out near the 40 
finally dropped by Brian Ford, a shirt grab by Robert Massey. And this is the longest return against the New Orleans Saints kickoff team of the year. And the key to it was the fact that the, Saint, the Saints coverage team looked like they were sleepwalking. They were getting blocked. They weren't trying to fight off the blocks. And luckily for the Saints, Mack and Ford here dragged down Dixon, or he'd have taken that one the distance. Cowboys operating from their own 39. 142 remaining in the first quarter. Cowboys trailing by three. Aiken. To Smith. Fumble and recovered by the Cowboys. So the net will be about a three-yard gain on a play, bringing up a second and seven. John Giesick on the fumble recovery. Well, cutting back and bouncing around is kind of a good thing for a running back like Emmett Smith. He's got the moves, he's got the speed, but inside are, is where the linebackers are. Ricky Jackson misses him there, Sam Mills hits him, and then Robert Pig Goff comes in and causes that fumble. Nickel package in for the Saints, five defensive backs. Second and seven from the 42. Under a minute to play in the first quarter. I formation. Smith. Fumble again, and it looks to have been recovered by the Saints this time. So Emmett Smith loses the fumble a second time. This one recovered by Robert Massey. The Saints are in a pass defense right here. Here's a linebacker, here's a linebacker, only two defensive linemen. Here, they're expecting the pass, they get the run, and Emmett Smith cannot handle a wet ball. The ball is a little bit damp on the bottom on one side, and it pops loose as soon as he gets any kind of contact on it. Big play for the Saints early. Fourth straight home sellout here at Texas Stadium, and right now the crowd watching the Cowboys trailing the Saints 3-0. Emmett Smith coughed up another fumble. This one recovered by the Saints. Ball at the 48 of Dallas, first and 10. Mays. Inside the 45. Stopped by Danny Noonan, a four-yard gain by Reuben Mays and 33 seconds remaining in the first quarter. And that's what New Orleans wants to do on first down. They want to blast this ball down the field, create a gap, and get at least five, six, seven yards on first. And that's a very aggressive objective for the game to get that many yards on first down. You're talking about a very confident offensive line. Playing against undersized defenders, as are the Dallas offensive line. Both of these defense are not power defenses. So that will be the last play of the first quarter, and that's the end of the first quarter. Score, Saints three, Cowboys nothing. Inside today, and the Cowboys trailing three to nothing. And Randy, the story in the first quarter, time of possession for the Saints. 10 minutes plus for the Saints. Dallas just under five. This is not an unusual position for the Cowboys. The defense has the pressure on them. They've got to hold the Saints and keep the offense in the game. Second and six from the 44 of the Cowboys. Mays. And Mays ahead for about two yards, stopped by Danny Noonan. And Chicago pulls it out in overtime over the Lions. A 50-yard pass play from Harbaugh to Anderson. And Detroit actually had a chance to win that one, but Eddie Murray misses a 35-yarder. Washington big over Miami. Cincinnati over Pittsburgh, so Cincinnati now leads in the AFC Central. Kansas City beating up on the hapless New England Patriots. Ball at the 42. Third and four. Walsh incomplete. Low pass. Intended receiver was Floyd Turner. Good short shirt hop there by Floyd Turner. Make a good first baseman. Steve Walsh threw that one from deep in the hole and short hopped it to his guy, but unfortunately, wrong sport. Just did not step into that pass. It's very important for young quarterbacks to remember you have to step into the throw. Tommy Barnhart used quite often last week 
And had a good foot indeed as he'll be kicking to Derek Shepard. Barnhart with a nice high punt. And touchback, so this will be brought out to the 20. Excellent hang time, 5.1, but all for naught. Their team, a Morton Anderson, 43-yarder in the first quarter, accounts for all the scoring. And Randy, as we mentioned before, again, time of possession, the big thing for New Orleans. But they'll take an ugly toe-to-toe -to -toe game. It's a Saints kind of a game early. They want to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys and slug it out and punch. So far, what they're doing, no one's getting a whole lot of yards. But what's happening is the Saints just aren't giving the ball up. They're making some first downs. If they continue with this kind of ground them out ground game, who do you favor now? I think the Saints are definitely favored. But remember, these Dallas Cowboys hang in late, and they win a lot of games in the fourth quarter. Matter of fact, all five wins have come in the first quarter. This is Troy Aikman going up top. Overthrown, the intended receiver was Calvin Martin, a fourth-year player out of Boston College. And Aikman trying to do a little early. Toy Cook was a guy doing the defending. Speaking of Toy Cook, Randy, it seems like a lot of teams have been trying to pick on him, but Cook says he's up to the challenge confidence-wise. Well, Toy's a very confident defensive back, as every DB has to be, but he points out to everybody that'll listen, hey, it's not because they're picking on me, it's because I go to every team's best wide receiver, and naturally people throw to their best wide receiver, so it looks like I'm being picked on. Makes sense. Second and 10. <laughs> on the ground again. Big hole and excellent run that time. Emmett Smith, rookie out of Florida. Vaughn Johnson on the stop. Nine yards gained on a play by Smith. And even at the end of that run, it seemed like Emmett Smith lost the handle a little bit on that. We talked about earlier, these defenders on the field today for both teams are not big physical guys. They like to take sides. And these big offensive lines are going to have a chance to really knock these guys around a little bit. And Smith, when you're going down, put both hands on the ball and wrap it up because the ball's a little damp and it'll squirt free. Third and one, Tommy Agee out. Daryl Johnston, a bigger back in at 6'2", 234. Smith has the first down and holds on to the ball much better this time up to the 45-yard line. Gene Atkins finally on the tackle. And Emmett Smith is a running back. They have not had this style of runner in Dallas. They had Herschel Walker, but like wide receiver Michael Irvin tells us, he goes, you know, when I used to block for Herschel, he never came out of these piles. He never bounced things around as much as this guy. All of a sudden, I've got to get downfield. And there's Irvin blocking right here against Toy Cook, keeping Toy Cook away from his guy, Emmett Smith. Six carries for 36 yards for Smith. Smith again. And the ball came loose. Did the whistle blow the play dead? That ball came out of there awful late. You got to remember the ground cannot cause a fumble. And it looks like it's going to stay Dallas's ball as Red Cashin signals that it's a second down. Four yards picked up on a play, Randy. If I'm the Dallas Cowboys coaches, I'm thinking about putting a handle on that ball right now for Emmett Smith. He's really having a hard time holding on to this ball, and he's the guy used to this kind of wet weather here in Dallas. It's been a little wacky. It's been weird. It's been wet. The Saints are the team that play indoors. And you can see the pursed lips of Jimmy Johnson hoping that Smith can hold on to it as well. He's had that bruised left wrist. We just saw it a little close up. Bruised it last Thursday on Thanksgiving. Play action on second and six. Aikman. And Aikman runs for the first down. Run out of bounds by Ricky Jackson. And Randy, the bootleg play is one of Aikman's favorites. And we see why. Eight-yard gain. People want to talk about Troy Aikman being the big, you know, blonde-haired, physical, statuesque kind of quarterback. But one of the things that made him a number one draft pick is the fact that he can do things like this. He can get out of there, and he can run. Now Troy be a smart quarterback. That's Ricky Jackson. Get out of his way. He is not going up there to ask you, how is your day going? <laughs> he said be a smart one, huh? Well, this ball is marked at the 44 of the Saints, first and 10. 11.25 remaining in the first half. Saints on top by a field goal. 
Eight. Good time. Complete and dropped by Jay Novacek. And Novacek, the NFL's leading receiver at tight end with normally great hands, took his concentration off of the pass. Well, everyone's been talking about the return of Steve Walsh and the anticipated quarterback duel. Both of these quarterbacks have done well in the month of November. They're both now hitting their stride. Steve Walsh has gotten some consistency in his game. He's finally getting to start some game. Troy Aikman's getting a running game Second to take a lot of pressure off of his passing. Second and ten. Out of the eye. You remember Steve here, despite that side. Smith on the ground. And dropped him on the ground. Sam Mills stops him after a gain of one. Sam Mills, Mills that is diminutive uh, linebacker at 5'9", 225. Kind of a mild-mannered guy by and large. He works for uh, the owner, Benson's Properties of Benson Enterprises. Wants to get in the car business when he's done. But remember, folks, this guy went to Montclair State. That's a Division three school. No athletic scholarships. You can get an uh, academic scholarship, but you can't get an athletic scholarship. He hung in there, and actually, when he first started playing football at Montclair State, they were going to make him an offensive guard. An offensive guard. Two tight ends, Novacek and Awalk, in. Third and nine. Aikman out of the shotgun. Throws it incomplete. Away on the sidelines, the intended receiver was Kelvin Martin, covered by Gene Atkins. Not much pressure put on Troy Aikman on that play, but it's a fine job downfield by the New Orleans Saints defense covering everybody he had, and Troy just had to throw that one away. So Mike Saxon ranked second in NFC in punting on, and Vince Buck back around the 10 for the Saints. Saxon with a good punt, fair catch signal by Buck at the 11 so the Saints will take over at their own 11 when we come back it's ball at their own 11 10 17 remaining in the half complete to Tice and Tice stopped on the play after a gain of maybe two does that look complicated folks that's New Orleans is sitting on the sideline Wayne Martin studying the offensive lineup I always wondered what does a defensive lineman have to worry about what the wide receivers are doing what formation were they in who cares go to the ball he's supposed to tackle the guy that has the ball makes it seem cerebral pick up a three on a play bringing up a second and seven pro set on the ground to Hayward, and Hayward with a huge hole and a huge gain. And enough for the first down, so Craig Hayward running hard before being stopped by Danny Noonan. Well, let's take a look here at right guard Steve Trapillo. Let's see what kind of job he does working against this Dallas defensive front. He's a guy who's big, is powerful, he's listed at 280, he's really about 290, and there he just sort of screens off Danny Stubbs, but helps hopes helps open a huge gash in the Dallas defense. First and 10, ball from the 24. Go, go, go. Motion. Hayward, the ball carrier, and Hayward running mean again. An eight-yard dash, if the big fella can dash, by Hayward. He can dash, he can cut back, he can move it. Watch Hayward. Everybody's going to want to start going like this way. They're moving. They're flowing. He'll do this, and he'll cut it back and bring it back against the grain, much like Reuben Mays, his teammate, does. It's pretty good blocking. Look at that hole. Haver, I mean, Haverdink, 74, has got nothing to do. The left tackle's got nobody to block. There's nobody around him. <laughs> and imagine he still gets paid for that play. And he's smiling. Second and two. Three tight ends. Hayward. Net. But not stop before using a good second effort to drag Jack Del Rio with him for a gain of one yard. We'll bring up a third and one. Now on that last play, we saw Hayward get the cutback, get his angles. Great blocking. Now let's watch the Dallas guys fill the backside gaps. They'll be there. Hayward's got nowhere to go. Good job. 
by Tolbert, number 92, and Del Rayo, number, nine, number 55. And look, Horton jumping over the piles, trying to get a little piece of Hayward. And it's close enough for a measurement. We'll see where the spot is. And ever so close. Try an inch. As an offensive lineman, that's the time of the game. You see that many yards? That many yards, that many inches to go for a first down? The center sneak sounds good. Let the center pick it up and sneak with it. Center sneak. It's illegal, but what the heck? Let's try it. <laughs> sounds like something you might have created. You've got a 260-plus fullback in the backfield. Mays and Hayward, the backs. Tyson scales a tight end, and flags fly everywhere. Well, maybe they did try that center sneak. <laughs> A lot of confusion, lots of early mo movement on both sides <laughs> of the line. First penalty of the ball game. False start on the offense. Stay down. Now, does that mean Red Cashing couldn't determine exactly who? You know why he says on the offense? <laughs> because there isn't any one guy that moved that time. It was the entire right side of the offensive line for the Saints. Watch this. Hilgenberg never moves the ball at center, and everybody just kind of goes, now, now? Brock kind of led the way. Look at your pillow. It looks like a statue. He ain't moving. There's a man there, Jim Moore, the head coach for the Saints, does not tolerate mental mistakes. Well, this now forces a third and sixth situation. They're looking back at Walsh to see exactly what he recognizes. Walsh throws a complete to Finnerty. And Finnerty up near midfield, a big first down for the Saints. 22-yard pass play from Walsh to Fennerty. Stopped by James Washington. Now watch Fennerty. Lines up here. The thing to watch is you'll see receivers crossing here, crossing, going all over the field, and Fennerty drags behind him and goes out for his pass. So far, the Saints are letting the defensive backs of the Dallas Cowboys run off, and they're going to the receivers. They're running backs and tight ends short underneath. Two catches for 41 yards on the day by Fennerty as there's a Cowboy down on the field. And while we check on his status, we'll take a break. James Washington in the middle of your screen there, number 37, got a little bit of a head ding on that last play. Got hit right in the side of the head on the far sideline, and it had like kind of delayed reaction because he didn't go down until he got down to the Dallas Star at the 50-yard line. Not the kind of play that you want your boys to see or comment about. First and ten from midfield. Walsh across to Martin. And Martin ahead for about three yards. So Martin has now caught a pass in 53 straight games. And that's the kind of play that an offense will run when it sees defensive backs perhaps playing a little too soft, a little too far off the receiver. That'll tend to bring them back up because they can't cheat back. Martin's a quick receiver. He's not a real speed guy, but he's a guy that can make people miss in a defensive backfield. And you saw there that Martin needs just eight yards more receiving-wise to become the all-time receiving yardage leader for the Saints. Already the all-time reception leader, Hayward. And Hayward moving the pile with him. Five yards gained by Craig Hayward, stopped in part by... Ray Horton and Danny Stubbs. And he originally got hit around the 43, 44 yard line and dragged everybody right up to about the 42. I mean, he took it, that big pile, about two yards all by himself. And look at that, first seven games, 35 yards. Now he's getting 66% of the Saints rushing. And the question still is, where was he early in the season? He was resting, yeah, he was resting, storing the energy up for late in the year. Third and two, ball at the 42. Three tight ends, Walsh to pass. Complete in traffic to Floyd Turner for the first down. Thirteen yard pass play, Walsh to Turner. Watch how aggressively and with that 
with all the confidence. Watch Steve Walsh step up here. He knows it's a completion. He sees his guy and he guns that thing. Little sidearm sling. Turner in a crowd makes a great catch of a nice throw. 4.45 remaining in the first half. Saints marching at the 29 of the Cowboys. Good time for a play action pass against an aggressive Dallas defense. Perryman to the near side. Mays, the ball carrier. And Mays making something out of nothing inside the 25 to about the 24 before being stopped by James Washington. Four yards gained by Reuben Mays. There's Emmett Smith on the sideline on the bench studying the football. It's like the coach, he came off the field and Jimmy Johnson said, here, here's a football. I don't want you to see you without it for the rest of the day. You drop it again, you're going to help the cheerleaders. Yeah, he was concentrating. Second and six. Both teams, full complement of timeouts remaining. Three apiece. Mays. Flag on a play as Mays gets down to about the 21. And that was an offensive lineman holding in there, thrown right in the middle of the pile. Eugene Lockhart and Jack Del Rio on the tackle. But the Saints are accomplishing something they want to do. They're taking time off the clock. Holding number 61 on the offense. It's still second down. There's, there's Hilgi, the center for the New Orleans Saints, one of the better uh, grasp and control artists on the offensive line. Here's Hilgenberg working, working against Noonan, or Jimmy Jones, number 97. Watch this. Look at that hand. Look at the right hand around the outside. That is what the referee saw. The umpire saw him get the arm around Norton, number 51. As soon as he saw it, penalty. Second and 16 from the 35. Walsh to pass. Complete to Hayward. And Hayward brought down around the ankles by Eugene Lockhart. Seven yards picked up on the play. Now let's take one more look at that last play and watch something. Watch the offensive linemen who come out in front of Craig Hayward and want to block for this little quick screen. Okay, you're going to let your guys through. Now look at the linemen. They're all going in the other direction. Follow your blockers. The big guys are out there. They want to help you, Craig. <laughs> Third and nine from the 29. Walsh going up top for Martin. Incomplete, but there's a flag on the play. We're going to get a little defensive holding on a defensive back that came from the deep middle, and that's that, that's that official's call. Manny Hendricks was in the area. I think the case there is they were just in the wrong coverage, and somebody grabbed the receiver because he knew it was going to be a big play. Holding. Number 45 on the defense, first down. That is Manny Hendricks, 50-year player from Utah. Red Cash is sound a little excited on that call, didn't he? <laughs> Enjoys his job. Dang. Only an only NFL referee get a good thrill out of calling a penalty on a guy. <laughs> down from the 24 of the Cowboys. Hayward, the lone back. Play action. Looking for Perryman. Incomplete. And it looked like it actually hit the hand of Eric Martin. And Perryman holding that finger looks like he might have gotten it jammed on something. But the ball was tipped. It appeared just as it was going to get to Perryman. Let's take one more look at it. Now watch the receivers will be crossing at the bottom of the screen. One will be Martin, one will be Perry. Walsh thinks he's got his man. Puts it up there too high for Martin. Obviously throwing it to Martin. Martin could just get a hand on it. Look at Perryman's reaction. Perryman was open, he was there. Second and 10. 2.42 remaining in the half. Made the ball carry. And Mays down near the first down marker. 
Eugene Lockhart and Ray Horton on the stop. Nine yards gained on the play as we wind down toward the two-minute mark. Six carries for 29 yards for Mays. We'll be back in just a looking for something to cheer about. But the Saints continue to eat up the clock. They lead it by only a field goal with two minutes remaining. In the first half, both teams with their full complement of timeouts, three remaining. 8-17, the time off the clock on this drive, Randy. And remember, last time the Saints were in this position, Brock on the right side jumped off sides, and the Saints wanted to have Craig Hayward leading Reuben Mays on the right. This time, Hayward lines up on the left as a lead blocker. Brenner and Tice, the two tight ends in. Mays, the ball carry, with the first down. And the touchdown, New Orleans. Some of the Houdats. Houdats will travel wherever. And we talked about Hayward lining up on the left. Well, he comes all the way to the right along with Dombrowski and cleans out that left side of the Dallas defense. Reuben Mays is not to be stopped. Norton 51 had a shot but couldn't do it. And there's Reuben Mays the last month or so, kind of a forgotten man in this offense. Everybody's talking about Craig Hayward, but this is a guy that puts a snap in the team's running attack. And the man with the point after is Morton Anderson. So the Saints sprint out ahead by the score of 10 to nothing, thanks to the touchdown run by that man, Mays. His 15-yard dash has the Saints on top of the Cowboys, 10 to nothing, 154 remaining in the first half. That drive covered 14 plays, 14 plays over 89 yards, 8.23 off of the clock. And the Saints continue to control the clock. Don't look for Dallas to do anything silly. They'll stay in their consistent, conservative passing. Gordon Anderson, booming kickoff, and Dixon, eight yards back, smartly. Decides not to bring it out, touchback. And the Cowboys will start from their own 20. The Reuben Mays touchdown. Watch Craig Hayward. He comes out here and gets a block on the defensive end. Watch Dombrowski. He comes out and he clears it out. Here's the hole. That's where the score is made. Reuben Mays gets this ball and cuts it back. And the only guy that's going to have a chance is 51 Norton. Going for a leg tackle. Comes up with nothing but air. So the Cowboys and Aikman with 154 remaining in the first half. To try and do something. Three wideouts. Aikman steps up in the pocket, decides to run it. And should have the first down. Maxi and Turnbull on the tackle as Troy Aikman runs for the first down. We'll be back in just a moment. Young quarterback Troy Aikman just now running back onto the field. New Orleans has three timeouts. Dallas has only two right now. You've got to think that Troy will be looking down the field around 15 to 20 yards down the field with a crossing pattern to a wide receiver. First and 10, Cowboys from their own 30. Emmett Smith, the lone back. Aikman being chased and throws it incomplete. The intended receiver was Michael Irvin. And don't forget, coming up at halftime, Greg Gumbel and Terry Bradshaw with all the scores and highlights and latest information from around the NFL. That's the NFL today at halftime in just a few moments. Troy Aikman is off to a rough start here in the first half for the Cowboys. He's two of seven for 11 yards so far, so far passing. The duel they talked about between Walsh and Aikman really has not materialized yet. As you indicated at the top. Second and ten. Complete to Novacek. And Novacek with the first down. 11-yard pass play from Aikman to Novacek. A minute and 20 seconds left. Plenty of time for the Cowboys. No need to get hurried. No need to get rushed. Ball at the 41. 
of Dallas. Aiken again to Novacek. And Novacek met and dropped by Benny Thompson, first year player out of Grambling State. And the Cowboys need to get down to about the 30-yard line of the New Orleans Saints to get in realistic field goal range. That'd mean a 47-yarder for Willis. Willis not a particularly strong leg. And Aikman underthrows Michael Irvin. We talked about stepping into the pass earlier with Steve Walsh. Right there, Troy Aikman did not step aggressively towards his receiver when he was throwing that pass, and it came up short. 40 seconds remaining in the first half. We talked about the cheat sheet on the NFL today today. We filed that report. Look at the cheat sheet on his left wrist. Got the plays, the situations. Situations like this, though, you won't find on that wristband. These plays come from upstairs where offensive coordinator David Shula is calling these plays. Third and three from the 48. And complete for the first down to Rob Awalt. There's a late flag on the play. And that flag came from the umpire would indicate holding. And the first down will come back. Nullified. Holding number 68 on the offense. Still third down. That's Crawford Kerr. 60-year player out of Florida as you take a look at Jimmy Johnson and Crawford Kerr. There's no such thing as a good time for a penalty, but especially in the last two minutes. Watch Crawford Kerr right here. Let's look, look at him working here against Turnbull, number 97. Now watch Kerr's hands. He's got him inside. He's got him inside. He's got one outside on his arm. I don't see anything flagrant. Don't see anything really bad about that one. Yeah, indeed, an old offensive lineman talking. Crawford Kerr deserves a badge just for being out there with two bad knees. On third down, Aikman is going to be sacked. Ronaldo Turnbull with his fourth sack of the year. The rookie out of West Virginia, a loss of eight on the play. And the Saints whistle for a timeout. Both teams with two remaining. As you take a look at Turnbull with the sack. 28 seconds remaining in the first half. Saints called that timeout. Both squads with two remaining. As you take a look at Jimmy Johnson. Saxon needs to boom this one for the Cowboys because there's plenty of time for the Saints to get a couple plays downfield and set up Martin Anderson for a field goal. Saxon, not a particularly good one, but from the 24. And loses the ball. Fumble recovered by Dallas. And it looks like you've got one official pointing the back judge saying that the play was whistled dead. One official's pointing at Dallas' ball, and the other one's pointing that the ball was down before the fumble. So Red Cashin has a little house cleaning to do. Daryl Johnston had recovered it for the Cowboys. Rule down by contact, first down. So the Saints keep the ball. Now watch the end of this play. Buck's getting lots of good blocking. See if he's down before this ball comes out. He's running. That ball's loose. That's a fumble. That is a fumble, folks. That's an easy call there. And if the Saints don't hurry up, well, no, I guess the whistle. The whistle blew, so there's no overrule unless there can be no replay. The whistle blew the ball dead. You won't see this reviewed. But it looks like there is a conversation taking place between the umpire and the referee now. Maybe there's a flag. Timeout number two for Dallas. It'll be a 40-second timeout. And that was a timeout. I was going to say, maybe there's a flagrant oversight rule in the NFL's replay rules. Mm -hmm. But that was clearly a fumble. And Jimmy Johnson, seeing it on the big screen here in the stadium, too, is pointing it out to the officials. But it won't do you any good, Jimmy. Here they have 14 seconds left. New Orleans can get two passes downfield as long as they throw them towards the ends, towards the sidelines. They've got two timeouts left, plenty of time to get the ball downfield and set up a long kick by Anderson. One more time. Let's look at this fumble. Not down by contact. This is a fumble. 
Buck drops this ball clearly, and it's not real popular here in Dallas. And the third replay has got the fans irate. Jimmy Johnson doing his imitation of a big-time wrestler. First and ten. To Hayward. No gain on the play. And New, or New Orleans calls a timeout, leaving four seconds on the clock. I can, the only thing I can think of here is they call a timeout and let four or five seconds run off was they want to throw a bomb downfield. Look at Jimmy Johnson, not a happy camper. Explain it to him softly. Let him know what's going on. He knows that would have meant three points for him. Getting the ball on the 40-yard line would have left plenty of time for them to get the ball down and get a field goal. They keep showing this over and over and over again on this screen, whipping this crowd into a frenzy, not to mention Jimmy Johnson. He needs no help. Well, keeping in mind that New Orleans has kept the crowd out of the game by controlling the clock. Any advantage that Johnson can get to get the crowd back into it is helpful from his viewpoint. And you think this is one of those Big Ben plays, the Hail Mary, deep and long, all the way down as far as Steve Walsh can throw it. On second and ten with four wideouts and Hayward in the slot. And it's to Eric Martin. And that'll end the first half as Isaac Hope drops him to the ground. That's the end of the first half with the score. The Saints 10, Cowboys nothing. Greg and Terry coming up next. The right of your screen there at Jason to Reunion Arena where the Dallas Mavericks play basketball. This is Texas Stadium, the stadium with the hole in the roof. And the weather conditions, and as I mentioned at the top of the game, good football weather indeed. Temperature only 50 degrees. And Randy, you say you like the wet conditions. That's a lineman's kind of game. The ball gets wet. The receivers and running backs have a hard time with it. And the, run, and the offensive linemen kind of slosh around and pound each other. And as we've seen in the first half, running back Emmett Smith of the Cowboys has had a hard time keeping a handle on a soggy ball. As Morton Anderson gets sick to kick off, Derek Shepard to the right, James Dixon to the left. And Shepard, eight yards back, decides not to bring it out, touchback. It'll be Dallas ball at their own 20. As Troy Aikman looking for a much better second half performance. Should take a look at the pass distribution in the first half for the Cowboys. The only unusual thing there is really the completions to the wide receivers because Troy Aikman always throws to his tight ends. He's got a tight end in AWALT with 45 plus receptions coming into this game. Michael Irvin to the near side. Kmart, Kelvin Martin to the top of the screen. Out of the eye formation. Play action. And Aikman for the first down to Martin. Run out of bounds by Brett Maxson. So the Cowboys open up strong. And you see the difference there between a possession receiver and a wide receiver who can run with the ball after he catches it. Because Martin will turn a short, 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 short. Kelvin Martin gives a little spin move here. And Massey can't hang with him. And he almost gets a little help downfield from Michael Irvin. But he can't quite get there in time. How long are the game? 45 yards. Ball marked at the 35 of New Orleans. Darrell Johnston, the ball carrier. And Johnston broke, ball tied, and dropped after three yards gained on the play. And folks, this is what's at stake. Wild card chase indeed. And this will go down all the way to the last week, all the way to the 16th game of the year. These guys will be slugging it out because remember, three teams this year are going to make the wild card scramble. And again, mathematically, every team in the NFC still in the hunt. Seconds and seven. Keep in mind that the Bears clinched the wild card spot earlier with their victory over Detroit. Hand off to Smith. First down. Tripped up by Toy Cook. Perhaps a touchdown save.
saving tackle. And Smith has got the leg speed. Smith has got the power. But another thing he has is the ability to go in bursts for big plays and big runs. What you couldn't see there was a great block by Michael Irvin, shielding off the linebackers, Johnson and the safety, Maxey, and just being tackled is Smith by the ankle. Nine carries for 56 yards on the afternoon by Emmett Smith. Ball at the 16-yard line of the Saints. Novacek and Awalk, the two tight ends in. First and 10. Agent. And Agent attacking by Pat Swilling. Gain of one. Dallas hoping to turn around a not-so-good statistic inside the 20. Keep in mind what you're about to see here. Dallas is the worst team in the NFL in scoring touchdowns once they get inside the 20. We're not talking about touchdowns and field goals, just touchdowns. Absolutely the worst. And a lot of that is execution. You get penalties, you get fumbles, you get mental mistakes. That was earlier this year. The Dallas Cowboys in the last month have been very efficient as an offense. They're more comfortable with each other. Second and nine. Eight. Good time. Complete to Novacek. And Novacek near the first down marker. Stopped by Robert Massey. And that's the way the Dallas Cowboys love to use their tight ends. They like to flip them underneath. They bring them under. They drag them underneath as the, as the wide receivers run off the defensive backs. They bring Awalt or they bring Novacek underneath for a pass. You know, Nate Newton, the big lineman, right tackle for the Cowboys, said that one of the ways they might be able to offset Ricky Jackson's effectiveness is Jay Novacek. They were going to have to keep an eye on him. Well, a lot of the times those outside linebackers get matched up with these tight ends, and they're being challenged not only to be able to run, defend, and rush the passer, also to be able to stay one-on-one -on -one with a tight end. And a lot of traffic in there, linebackers can get scraped off on those crossing patterns. Big Nate Newton, when he talks about his weight, he just says, I'm 300-plus. Well, Jimmy Johnson, <laughs> Jimmy Johnson <laughs> describes Emmett Smith, or describes Craig Hayward as a Nate Newton with Emmett Smith's speed. <laughs> But Newton, the big teddy bear who loves his moms, he says. Third and two from the eight. Out of the eye. Smith trying to turn the corner. Should have the first down. Robert Massey on the stop. And he does. Three yards gained on the play by Emmett Smith. One of the things you don't want to do against New Orleans, who is a quick, aggressive defense, is start going side to side. Well, Emmett Smith has the speed, and he gets the blocking out of Novacek and Johnston there to just get enough for the first down. Normally, you want to go right at him. You said he likes those kind of runs better than the long ones. He likes to guys, make guys miss, likes to embarrass them. First and goal. Ball at the five. Johnston down to about the two. Stopped by Vaughn Johnson. Stopped by Gene Atkins, number 28. Ball is marked at the one. Call it a four-yard game. We'll bring up a second and goal, and the ball marked at the one. And Dallas should really get rid of all pretense here. Look for them to pound this ball into the end zone. Smith and Agee, the backs. Smith. Touchdown, Dallas. No flags. said don't go sideways come right at him Gisek, Stepnoski, Crawford Kerr inside led by the motion of Novacek a gaping hole in the middle and Emmett Smith with his seventh rushing touchdown of the season Ken Willis on for the point after and it's 
good. So the Cowboys have narrowed the deficit, trailing by three to the Saints. Right here, Simmons 96, and watch him get a piece of the linebacker Mills and enable Smith to score. Watch this. He gets the tackle first. Bip, whack, right there. Gets just enough to Mills to knock him off and enable Smith to score. Four and a half minutes off of the clock by the Cowboys. This is taken at the 11. Milton Mack. Next Saturday at 2 o'clock Eastern, it's college football's annual salute, believe it or not, to the Army and the Navy. For a century, these two academies have matched pride and tradition off and on the gridiron. Now, last year's meeting resulted in a climactic finish as Navy squeezed out a thrilling two-point victory. So join us for another renewal of this classic matchup next Saturday right here on CBS. First and 10, ball at the 28. Mays. And Ruben Mays up to about the 33, five-yard run. Will bring up a second and five. And Randy? These Dallas Cowboys seem really fired up right now, James. I'd have loved to have been in that halftime locker room with the Dallas Cowboys. You saw Jimmy Johnson running off the field. He was going off. You know he got in that locker room and was telling these guys they're trying to steal this game. They're trying to take this away from us. If we don't come out and pound it at them and take this game away from them, they're going to take us out of the game. What do they do? Right down the field for seven. Second and five, ball at the 33. Mays again, trying to find a hold and slips into one. Tackled by Eugene Lockhart. And a pickup of about six on the play. Nine carries for 55 yards on the day for Reuben Mays and a real story of perseverance. Knee injury year before last, Achilles heel last season, coming back strong. And I talked in the first half about Mays on that touchdown really being the spark and the jump in this offense. Hayward's got the power, but Mays is the guy that has the speed and that quick cutback ability that can drive defenses nuts. Walsh looking for Brenner. Complete for the first down as he tight ropes and is finally dragged down by Ray Horton. A 22 yard pass play as a 245 pound Brenner. Not delicate. Not agile, but lumber. Well, people talk about the big blocking tight ends of the New Orleans Saints. They say they're kind of like offensive linemen. Well, this guy shows a little athletic ability. It almost hurts to watch it. Watch this. Looks like he's going to pull something. Is he out? No. Barely no. Is he out? No. Oh, this guy's straining. He's lucky he didn't blow an ankle out trying to stay inbounds. <laughs> Gives a, a new meaning to tightrope walking. One more time. Out of bounds right there. Certainly there. Two tight ends, first and ten, ball at the 39, the Dallas, Mays. And the Dallas defense, excellent job of stringing him out. There is a flag on the play. Should have holding on the left tight end for the New Orleans Saints, working against Jim Jeffcoat. Jim Jeffcoat, number 77. I believe that was Tice, 82. And against the Saints. Holding number 82 on the offense, still first down. It's John Tice. And in all fairness to Tice, which you got to remember, a lot of confusion in the background and the backfield for the New Orleans Saints. Mays and Walsh got a little mixed up up here. They don't know. He goes here, he goes here. Walsh is trying to give him the ball. But watch Tice wrap his arms around Jeffcoat. Gives him a little, oh, it's kind of an offensive lineman's greeting. You won't see it until right here. Now, look at that. He's got an arm all the way to the front number of number 77. He's got a hold of a seven that's in the front of his jersey. Does that qualify as play in your book or not? I'd say intentional. <laughs> First and 20 from the 49 of the Cowboys. 
Hayward, the lone back. And the ball carry. And Hayward. Driving Jack Del Rio ahead, carrying him for about four yards on the carry. Hayward picking up 11 of the 20 yards. And Craig Hayward's one of those NFL backs that can issue the kind of the NFL version of the Disneyland e-ticket. And on that play, Jack Del Rio kind of got on the ride and rode it for a little bit. A little bumpy, landing was kind of tough, but it was an e-ticket ride. The e-ticket ride. Second and nine. Hayward again, the long back, the wide receiver. This is Martin in motion. To Brent Perryman. And Perryman, maybe about five yards. Ken Norton on the stop. Seven oh nine remaining in the third. Saints on top by the score of ten to seven. James Brown along with Randy Cross. And a lot of composure, a lot of poise by the New Orleans Saints. They're taking the crowd back out of the game here in Dallas. Dallas drives down, gets the momentum going, and the Saints are being the methodical self, eating up the clock, eating up the yards. Third and four from the 33. Incomplete intended receiver, Eric Martin. And that pass right there was forced by Steve Walsh. That might have been an opportunity for an interception because everybody was covered, and he threw that ball possibly where Billy Bates, who was covering as the middle linebacker in the nickel, could have had a chance to get it. So Morton Anderson will come on to attempt the field goal. This will be a 50-yarder. His longest this season, a 52-yarder against Cleveland. He was kicking 57-yarders in warm -up. And it's good, so Morton Anderson showing his accuracy and consistency of 50-yarder. And moves the Saints out in front by the score of 13 to seven. Well, Randy, you said he was practicing 57-yarders. Day in the park for him. Isn't it awfully nice to have the luxury of a Morton Anderson as a field goal kicker? He can get it from anywhere from 55 in. He gets such a quick, Height on his kicks. And Anderson pushing this one back again. And Dixon, no choice but to down it. So they'll start from their own 20. Next Sunday here on CBS, the action starts at 12.30. And, of course, the last word before kickoff, the NFL today. Then it's doubleheader action. Some of you will see, of course, Minnesota and New York. Most of you will see that game. Some will see San Francisco and Cincinnati. Game two will feature the Chicago Bears playing at Washington, while these same Saints will travel out west to play the L.A. Rams. When you see those schedules for those Giants and 49ers, makes that game tomorrow even more crucial for them. They both have very tough games left in the last month of the season. Smith, the lone back in the ball carrier. It's back up just across the line of scrimmage. Gain of one. Well, as we take a look at the NFC divisional leaders, again, for all practical purposes, division races all wrapped up. And all three of these teams in the hunt for home field advantage in the playoffs. Everybody wants that playoff game in their backyard. One of these successful teams will be playing in the first round of the playoffs as a number three division winner. What do you think about the Giants and 49ers tomorrow? To be honest with you, I kind of like the Giants in the ground game. Second and nine here for the Cowboys. Ball at the 21. Aikman complete to Calvin Martin. And Martin near the first down marker. We'll see where they spot it. Robert Massey on the stop. And it is indeed a first down. And Dallas is continuing what they did last drive. Moving the ball down the field. Nothing real flashy. Same sort of quick pass that turned into a 50-something yarder last time. But James, we talked about the Giants and the 49ers. I like the Giants in that running game for one reason. At this point, the 49ers rely on one guy. If Joe Montana does not have a good day, the Niners have very little chance of winning, despite the fact they have the number one rushing defense, despite the fact they have Roger Craig and Jerry Rice. The Niners run as Joe Montana goes. 
First and ten here. Ball on the 30. Aikman going up from Irvin. And it's complete for the first down. Irvin working against Toy Cook. 23-yard pass play. Michael Irvin missed most of last year with a bad knee. Major reconstruction of the knee. And Jimmy Johnson told us, I can't believe this guy. He worked hard. He didn't get down. He was on injured reserve earlier in the year. He's come back faster. He's come back stronger. And he's making bigger plays now than before when he got hurt. That was just a contest of who wanted that ball the worst. And Michael Irvin wanted it the worst. Irvin said he thought his respect level was high around the league when Daryl Green was assigned to cover him last week. And on the bootleg, Swilling not fooled at all and gets the sack. So Pat Swilling getting his ninth sack of the season. Well, Troy Aikman and the Dallas Cowboys were selling boot and selling run. And Pat Swilling, number 56 of the New Orleans Saints, he didn't buy him. This is a veteran. This is an all-pro. And Troy Aikman did a poor job there of faking that run. Swilling's on that backside. You got to hide the ball. You got to create some doubt in the linebacker's mind. Swilling saw he had the ball the entire time. Second and 18. Ball on the 46. Complete to aging. Stopped by Toy Cook. Six yards gained on the play. Three nineteen remaining in the third. Cowboys trailing the Saints by six. Little classroom session over there. The Dallas defense trying to figure out how they're going to stop this New Orleans Saints methodical steamroll of an offense. Third and 12. Ball at the 47 of the Saints. Swilling will be called for all sides. Free play here. Incomplete intended receiver. Emmett Smith and a late flag. Looks like defensive interference. Well, you're going to have offside on Pat Slowing, number 56, but you're also going to have defensive pass interference. I believe that's on Matt, number 24. Offside, number 56 on the defense. That penalty is declined. Pass interference, number 28 on the defense. Touchdown! That's Gene Atkins, fourth-year player out of Florida A&M, trying to defend... Emmett Smith. And he got on the back of Emmett Smith and reached around. Those, those officials back there, that back judge, all he does to, has to do is stand back there and look for penalties like that. First and 10, ball at the 30 of the Saints. 249 left in the third. Novacek in motion. Smith, the ball carries. Slips. Slips his way to a one-yard game. This game is presented by authority of the National Football League, and this CBS telecast is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of CBS, the Dallas Cowboys, and the National Football League is prohibited. We saw the intense eyes of Jim Jeffcoat sitting on Jimmy Johnson's sidelines as the Cowboys continue to march. Ball at the 29. Eight to pass on second down. Complete for the first down to Kelvin Martin inside the 15. Vaughn Johnson on the tackle. Kelvin Martin, with the resurgence of Michael Irvin, has kind of been forgotten in this Dallas offense as far as the media is concerned, but defenses have not forgotten about Kelvin Martin. Troy Cook covering him there. Ball drilled in by Troy Aikman. There's a big difference between the Troy Aikman of the first half and the Troy Aikman we're watching right now run this Dallas offense. A lot of confidence and a lot of authority running this offense. Those photographs may have helped. First and 10 from the 14, Asian. 
Robert Massey. A yard on the play. Robert Massey on the stop. Assisted by Sam Mills. A play like that can be very deceiving for A.G. as a running back. He figures, hey, it's clogged up side, out inside. Look at all that room out there. You don't see the corner back in support. You don't see the inside linebacker, Sam Mills, scraping to do it. That's why I say they're a quick, aggressive defense going sideways does not work well against New Orleans. Eight plays, 65 yards. A good bit of time eaten up on this play, on this drive. Eight being chased by Martin. Now by Jackson and throws it away. That could have very easily been intentionally grounding the ball on Troy Aikman, throwing that away to avoid a sack by Wayne Martin. We've got a holding penalty against the New Orleans defense somewhere back in the defensive backfield in the end zone. A well-hidden late flag there. Holding, number 56 on the defense, first down! Well, a costly penalty against Pat Swilling. Outstanding linebacker with the uh, Saints. And we talked earlier about the outside linebackers working against those big tight ends for the Dallas Cowboys. Those are the guys I can think of that have to be holding when they're working. It's got to be working against the tight ends of the Cowboys. First and goal, ball marked at the nine. He made two tackles, but not becoming three. Swilling, Maxi, and company in there on the tackle. And as well as the New Orleans Saints defense flows, you see that hesitation, a little confusion in the Dallas running game there. You cannot afford that. These guys close holes. Holes in the NFL only stay open for a split second, as Emmett Smith told us. And when you hesitate at all, that hole's gone. Loss of three on the play, and that's the end of the third quarter. Saints on top by six. Irving, Texas. Texas Stadium, packed house on hand. Cowboys trailing the Saints, 13 to seven. James Brown along with Randy Cross. And Randy trailing in the fourth quarter, not too important to the Cowboys. Every one of the games they've won, they've won in the fourth quarter. Keep in mind, they've also lost too late in the game. But it's a forte of this team and this young quarterback asserting themselves in the fourth quarter. Second and goal, all at the 12. Complete to Novacek. And Novacek down inside the five, tackled by Toy Cook. Seven yards picked back up on that play. And a good job of hanging in there by Troy Aikman. He was getting all kinds of pressure. And as the defensive lineman was just laying his hands on Troy, he flipped that one out. And the ball is spotted back at the five now as opposed to inside the five. And maybe some of that halftime talk from Jimmy Johnson was directed at Troy Aikman. As you see so far this half, he is a perfect seven of seven. Third and goal from the five. Martin to the near side. Irving to the top. Aikman to Johnston, touchdown. Dallas, no flag. Jimmy Johnson loved to see this young quarterback maturing game by game. Troy Aikman off to a great start here in the second half. Willis on for the point after. And it's good. So the Cowboys love the action in the fourth quarter. Ahead by one. Take the ball, go down behind the parked car and wait for me to throw it to you. Here's the play for the Dallas Cowboys for the last touchdown, Aikman to Johnston. Willis, short to Buck at the nine. To about the 25. As 
as Troy Aikman looking for more direction from upstairs. Next to each other. Put the phones down and talk. <laughs> or maybe they're talking upstairs to the offensive coordinator, Mr. Shula. But Troy Aikman's done a great job in his first half so far. Both these teams have traded big shots. Second half. Big drive down score. Big drive down score. Another big drive for Dallas and a score. The emphasis here is on the Dallas defense. Can they break the mold? Can they break the chain and stop New Orleans' offense? From the 25, first down for the Saints. Play action. Walsh flags on the play as Walsh gets rid of it. And I think one of those offensive linemen for the Saints got in there and grabbed somebody to keep him off of Walsh. A lot of pressure from Jeff Coat, Noonan, and Jones. Holding number 72 on the offense, still first down. Big Jim Dombrowski. And remember your player out of Virginia. Sorry, James. Remember what we talked about earlier? This big offensive line for the Saints outweighs Dallas. The longer Steve Walsh holds on to the ball, the more likely it is one of these little quick guys will get away from one of these big offensive linemen and put some pressure on Steve Walsh. First and 20 from the 15. Three wideouts in for the Saints. Walsh to Martin, who drops it, and a late flag. And Kevin Haverdink down on the ground for the Saints, the left tackle. And Haverdink. Obviously, in a lot of pain, a very important member along that offensive line, Randy, that has allowed only one sack of Walsh in the last four games. And as you mentioned, the fewest in the league. And 17. Number 74 on the offense. Half the distance to the goal. Still first down. And Haverding, talk about dumping more dirt on him. Gets assessed with the penalty, and he's in pain. Game summary, the note there, Troy Aikman, impressive second half. And, Randy, you talked about the halftime chat. I would love to have heard it as well. But going back to your point at the top of the show, what you expected here, this has been like two club fighters going at it and slugging it out. That's right. The running game's been effective for both teams so far. Now it's a matter. Aikman's playing better. Walsh is playing steady. Which quarterback will make the mistake that will cost his team the game? Well, one thing that certainly seems to be happening more now, there's a lot more passing taking place with that penalty. The Saints back. It's now first and 27. Ball at their own eight. Walsh is passed. Batted up and down. Almost intercepted. And Danny Noonan, number 73, batted that Walsh pass down. Fourth-year player out of Nebraska. And Steve Walsh will hold on to this ball for a while. We talked about these defensive linemen for Dallas. They'll get blocked early, but it's a screen. They're being let go. Walsh doesn't get it up enough. Oh, what a chance for Noonan and Jeffcoat. If Jeffcoat 77 had seen that, it would have been six points and a touchdown. Second and 27. Dime defensive package in for the Cowboys. Complete to Finnerty. And Finnerty. Across the 15 to about the 16, eight yards regained on the play. Tackled by Bill Bates. The Cowboys have this crowd into the game, and they're into the game with some good intensity here. We're going into their favorite qu qu quarter, the fourth quarter. They've got to stop the Saints here if they want to give their offense a chance to win it for them late. Third and 18. Trips right formation. Complete to Perryman. And a flag. Late hit indeed. Late That'll hit. Do it. Late hit piling on there late was Billy Bates coming deep from the defensive backfield. Unnecessary play from a veteran player.
unnecessary roughness. Number 40 on the defense, Herska. Billy Bates, a man that he kind of counted out here in Dallas. They said he's a special teams player. He's too slow. He can't play here. He's played very well for the Cowboys here in 1990. But right here, you'll see with a slow motion, it'll look worse. But he sees the guy, his Perryman is not down. But there is no need to add that extra little shoulder to the face at the end. And as a result of the penalty to the eighth year veteran, the ball is now marked at the 39. First and 10, 12.35 remaining in the game. Hayward. And Hayward bulldozing his way. And another flag. Ken Norton assisting on the stop. And this goes against the Cowboys. The Cowboys are grasping at anything possible to tackle Craig Hayward. That time, inadvertent face mask. Face mask, number 51, still first down. That's Ken Norton. Well, normally, it's a punch to the face in the ring, Ken. Now watch the end here in the run. 51 is Norton. Does he get on the mask right there? Oh, yeah. Easily, he had that mask grasp. Still first down. One more time. Right there. All over. The officials are holding things up right now to move the chains. The chains have not moved down the sidelines yet. So that means this is a first and one situation. Clock ticking, 12-14 remaining in the game. The Cowboys on top by one. Play action. Walsh throws it forward. That's the Cowboys looking for a little help from the official, but none coming. Jimmy Jones and Jim Jeffcoat on the pressure. That's a shovel pass. That is not a fumble. He flipped that underhanded, but it is still a pass. But the Cowboys are contending. They say we had grasp and control, and the referee, Red Cashin, agrees, marking him back around the 40-yard line. That was a sack for Dallas. Now watch these guys working inside. You can't tell me these guys don't earn their money. Danny Noonan working against Hilgenberg, number 61. Persistence. Jeffcoat's got him. Jones has got a piece of him. Second and eight here. That sack only the second in five games that I got that offensive line. You take a look at Mays. Mays, three yards gained on the play, tackled by Danny Noonan. And we talk about that offensive line of the Saints, a very key member. Haverdink, that left tackle, number 74, with a sprained knee. He could be back, but right now, Glenn Derby, the second-year player out of Wisconsin, is in there at left tackle, number 79. Third and five, Gil Finner to the end. Hayward out. Four wide receivers. Walsh complete and enough for the first down. So Steve Walsh coming through as he finds Eric Martin. Tackled by Bill Bates and Randy at the end of the first half with that 15 yard pass from Walsh to Martin. Martin became the all time yardage leader for the Saints as well as of course reception leader that happened a few weeks back. Not only catches but yardage pa yardage passing Danny Abramowitz in both categories. First and ten from the 49 of the Cowboys. High formation right. Mays. Mays ahead for about two. Tackled by Tony Tolbert. We're seeing both quarterbacks in this second half really being efficient, really being consistent in two different styles. Walsh is more like a surgeon, kind of like a Joe Montana. You don't notice how bad he's cutting you up. Troy Aikman's made, made a lot bigger plays, more spectacular plays. They're both very good in their own way. From the 48, second and eight. Hey. Tackled by Eugene Lockhart. Gain of two on the play. 
Bring up a third and six. Isaac Holt down on the ground, a little shaken up after that tackle. You know, defensive guys, a lot of the times, they get better, they get bigger shots from their own teammates on defense trying to help on a tackle than they ever do from a running back. And the man from Alcorn State, Isaac Holt, playing with low back contusion in the first place. A rejuvenated Cowboy team with playoff possibilities in front of them, leading by one, third and seven. Good, big third down play. Got to get pressure on Walsh to keep him from throwing short underneath. Four wide outs in for the Saints. Walsh, incomplete intended receiver Gil Finnerty, defended by Bill Bates. And Randy on the, the series before the commercial, Isaac Holt, suffering, as I mentioned before, with low back contusions, was taken off the field and replaced by Kenneth Gant, the rookie out of Albany State. And on that, that play right there, it wasn't really a matter of getting pressure on Walsh. It was a fine job of covering by everybody, specifically Billy Bates. On Hart. Short punt. It takes a Saints roll. And we'll stop at about the five. A 41-yard punt is what it turns out to be. And special teams, again, coming through. A little indecision on the part of Shepard, number 87. Should I get it? Should I leave it go? I think he should have at least tried to catch it and down it back around the 8, 9, or 10-yard line instead of pinning Troy Aikman and his offense all the way back to the 5. But one more time, we see a big special teams play by the New Orleans Saints. 8.57 remaining in the contest. Cowboys leading by one, looking to improve on their 5-7 and seven record and playoff hopes. Eight to Novacek. And Novacek picks up about one on the play. Five defensive backs in for the Saints. Vince Buck. Second and nine on the ground. Hard-earned yards by Emmett Smith, two to be exact. Tackle is made by Jim Clark, starting forward. Also, Troy Clark, number 21. And this sets up a third down for the Dallas Cowboys, where they want to get the ball out for a first down to the 16-yard line to get their defense a little bit of rest. They should get a first down here. They've got to rest their defense that's been pounded on by New Orleans' offense. Third and seven. Dime defensive package in for the Saints. Novacek in motion. Novacek complete. Not enough for the first down. Run out of bounds by Toy Cook. And Novacek is going to be about three yards shy of the first down marker. And he's not real happy. He sort of has a look on his face like, gosh, I wish I could have turned it up. But it does allow Mike Saxon a lot more room. Now he's standing on the goal line. Before, he would have been way into the end zone trying to kick this ball. Has been averaging 43 yards per punt on the season. And these Saints have been returning a lot of balls for long yardage against the Cowboys. And Vince Buck moved back to the 37. And Buck takes it up to around the 48, stopped by Vincent Smith. 50-yard punt, 12-yard return. Next Saturday, right here at CBS Sports, 2 o'clock Eastern Time, Army and Navy, 91st meeting in Randy, a series that started back in 1880. And keep an eye on Mike Mayweather of Army. He's a leading rusher in service academy history. Think of the great ones. Davis, Blanchard, Napoleon McCallum. Goes on and on. Dawkins. I mean, there's been a lot of great runners. Mayweather's number one. Next Saturday, right here on CBS. Ball is marked on the 48 of the Saints. 6.55 remaining in the contest. Saints trailing by one. 14-13. Hayward, the lone back. Hayward, the ball carrier. Flag on the play as Hayward gets up near midfield. 
about a yard and a half gained on the play. And referee Red Cashin threw that flag himself, detecting holding immediately. He won't have to check with anybody for who held. Holding number 72 on the offense. Still first down. That's Jim Dombrowski. There's Big Dom, Big Dombrowski out of University of Virginia. But let's watch him right here, working against Danny Noonan, number 73. And Red Cashin from the back and to the right caught this one. And obviously, left arm wrapped around his throat and right arm around his waist. Ball moved back to the 38, first and 20. Batted down and caught by Hilgenberg. Noonan was the one who batted it. Hilgenberg with the alert catch. And talk about a lineman's dream. And if Hilge would have had a little blocking, he would have scored. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You said that with some enthusiasm. Now, watch the ball get batted down here by Noonan. Nice play by Noonan. Goes right down. Hits off of the back of Jeffcoat. And here he goes. Good block by Brock. Good footwork. Oh, way to drive. Way to run. Second and 11. Walsh to Tice. First down. So John Tice, the eighth-year player out of Maryland University. Excellent play. Tackled by Isaac Holt, who's back in the action. 15 yards on the play. The Cowboys are not getting much heat on Steve Walsh. They're choosing to drop back rush with four and try to cover everybody. Well, Norton and the linebackers are nowhere near Tice on that play. Huge gaping hole in the zone opened up by Tice. And the Saints continue to chew up the clock. 520 remaining. Trailing by one. First and ten from the 38. Hayward. And Craig Hayward backs his way for about two, and his backside is as tough as the front side. And he's not real happy right there, mainly because Jimmy Jones dragged him down by the back of his head. It wasn't face mask, face mask. He looked like he grabbed him from the back of the helmet and pulled him down. There's Jimmy Jones out of the University of Miami. University of Miami. Jimmy Johnson's pretty high, and this guy says he's going to be a real good one for a long time for the Cowboys. Second and eight. Mays and Hayward, the backs. Mays. Jim Jeffcoat on the stop as Mays could not find an opening on the corner. Live from Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas. Dallas Cowboys and New Orleans Saints, both teams with playoff hopes and possibilities. Cowboys on top, 14-13. Four minutes remaining in the contest. James Brown along with Randy Cross and Jim Morris' team eating up the clock. We talked a little while ago which quarterback will make the key mistake that will cost his team so far in the fourth quarter. A lot of poise from both quarterbacks. Third and ten. Incomplete intended receiver, Lonzel Hill. And Hill... Look to have had a case of alligator arms that time. Well, if Martin Anderson wants to try a 57-yarder, he's got the chance right now with the ball at the 38-yard line. It'd be at least that. It'd be a 58-yarder, and Jim Mora is not going to give Dallas the ball back with that kind of field position if Martin misses. Tommy Barnhart will be on the field to punt. Dallas has nobody deep right now to get this kick. They're looking for a fake. They've got a defensive posture. It's punted. And takes a Dallas bounce. Where we marked at about the 21. A 17-yard punt by Barnhart. Cincinnati since that huge comeback Jerry Rice catching the pass with no time left back in 1988 1987 I'm sorry. on first and ten 
Aikman, good time. Now being chased by Turnbull. And tackled by Turnbull. And that's where Troy Aikman's size come into play, comes into play, picks up three. Both teams with their full complement of timeouts. Three remaining. Well, both Troy Aikman and Steve Walsh are showing in this second half why they're both considered number one picks in a draft. Troy Aikman's showing the poise. He's running it when he has to. He's getting positive yards. And both quarterbacks are making very good decisions. 2.55 and counting remaining in the game. Cowboys with the ball marked at their own 24, leading by one. This time to Robocheck. First down. Knocked out of bounds by Vaughn Johnson. Earlier in this half, we saw Pat Swilling eat up a bootleg. Now, what we want to watch is let's watch Jackson, the left linebacker. He's going to be working from out here. Watch him bite on this fake. He goes all the way across the field when he sees it's going to be a run. Ricky Jackson bites on it. There's no one to stop, either Novacek or Aikman. And Awell gets out in front, laying a good block on Atkins to open the way. Eight catches for 69 yards for Jay Novacek. To take a look at Swilling and Jackson, the two outstanding linebackers for the Saints. And the biggest difference between those two plays those guys made, Ricky Jackson was in a three-point stance playing defensive end. Pat Swilling had been in a two-point stance playing linebacker. Jackson's momentum carried him much further. Swilling had the luxury of being stand of standing up and being able to see where things were. First and ten, ball at the 48, 225 remaining. Aiken instructing his back out of the eye. Smith missed by Johnson. And stays in bounds and takes it up to midfield. A timeout called by New Orleans. That leaves him with just one remaining. 2-16 remaining in the contest. For all intents and purposes, New Orleans has two timeouts left, James. Not only their regular timeout, but here at the two-minute mark, the clock will stop again. For Dallas to win this game, they need at least two first downs. Two more first downs, Dallas wins this ball game. They run the clock out. And of course, Dallas and New Orleans, both teams in the wild card chase in the NFC. Philadelphia, Washington, and Green Bay would be in if the season were to end today. Dallas trying to keep its hopes alive. And can you believe the Rams? They move into it. Talk about teams turning around after rough starts, the Rams and the Vikings. And here's Steve Walsh and his wide receivers. They're working on a two-minute offense. All they want is a chance. Just let us get back in. They know what they want to do. On second down, Smith. First down. And more. Seventeen yard run by Emmett Smith 80 yards on the day And we're at the two-minute mark Watch the hole it's gonna form right through here right over Stefanowski and Gisek and Newton big dash in the right side Newton blocks down on Martin There's nobody there Atkins told us yesterday. I want to hit I want to fill there was your chance and Smith ran him over Time remaining in the game. Cowboys on top by one. Ball at the, at the 34 of the Saints. Smith hit by John Smith. No gain on the play. And the Saints use their last timeout. So New Orleans with no timeouts remaining. As you take a look at Emmett Smith, 18 carries for 80 yards on the afternoon for Smith. And Aikman, talk about a turnaround from the first half to the second half, Randy, perfect in the second half. And that running game takes a lot of pressure off a quarterback. Aikman's able to relax, and you saw those numbers, 11 of 11 
for a touchdown. It's been the leadership, the poise, and the decisions he's made in the second half that have really made a difference for the Dallas Cowboys. No comparison for both these quarterbacks from the first half to the second half. See Kevin Haverdink, the big tackle with a twisted knee, number 74. Things are not looking good for the Saints here. They have no timeouts left and a minute and 53 seconds to go. Dallas would have to do something catastrophically stupid to lose this game. All five Dallas victories again have come in the fourth quarter. legs driving him forward four-yard gain on the play as the clock continues to tick now if Dallas holds on and wins this is the way the wild card scramble will look Dallas moves up one spot out of the three spots for the wild card positions in postseason and Dallas schedule wise says look we've got a buy next week then we have Phoenix then we have Philadelphia we don't have a tough schedule. They close with Atlanta. They have one real winning tough team left on their schedule, and that's Philadelphia. Look at that. You're looking at a team that, by all reasoning, should be 8-8 eight eight at the end of the year. What a turnaround. The bye should come at a good time for them. Smith, flag on the play. Believe the clock ran out. No, nope. procedure against Dallas Cowboys. Moved a little bit early out of the backfield. Illegal motion, number 22 on the offense. That penalty is declined. It's fourth down. Emmett Smith, the culprit there. So with 58 seconds remaining in the game, the Saints will apparently get one last opportunity at it. But before that, Dallas is going to try a 47-yard field goal. New Orleans is a team that rushes very well against these kickers. Willis had better get this one up high early because the middle of the New Orleans rush has been known to knock him down. As long as 49 this year, that came against the Skins on Thanksgiving Day. It's up. And it's good. Ken Willis, the rookie, the only free agent rookie on the Cowboys, boots Dallas in front by four. We talked about the hype he needed to get this thing between the crossbars and out. 47 yards is a long way, well above the out, outstretched hands of the defensive lineman. Don't celebrate too soon, Dallas. There's a lot of time left, 53 seconds. Willis knows it's good right now. He's just hoping nobody calls it bad. There you go. You know it. There's Jimmy Johnson. He's not celebrating. He knows it isn't over. He knows a big mistake by his defense, and the Saints are still in this game. Saints timeouts remaining. Dallas with three. So in the game of chess, at least Jimmy Johnson has taken away one strength of the Saints, that being Morton Anderson. Ken Willis kicking off and back deep for the Saints. Atkins and Finnerty. And this will be Atkins from the 13. Stop at the 20. Derek Shepard. A textbook job by Derek Shepard of backside contain on kickoff coverage. Never lost his leverage on the runner. Never overcommitted to the backside. Stayed right where he was and wrapped him up. Fine tackle, too, for a wide receiver. Remember, that's a wide receiver. They're not used to tackling. So the education of Steve Walsh continues. 46 seconds remaining. Ball marked at the 21. Trailing by four. 
You can talk about Perriman and Martin, but Alfin and Turner can bust them a long way. For the Saints. Complete to Hayward. Fumble. Dallas recovers. player out of Washington who's been playing all season with a damaged knee comes up with the fumble recovery let's take a ground level look at it in the Saints game last week Craig Hayward fumbled the ball out of the backfield they throw it to him in a critical situation you got to wrap it up he doesn't the head on the ball and Horton comes up with it so Aikman kneels on the ground and this one's over so Aikman kneels in the position called win the game and Jimmy Johnson picks up his third victory in a row the first time the Cowboys have done that since 1987 and the Saints will remain winless here at Texas Stadium 0 and 8 and this was not a game won by Dallas really on mistakes and flaws Though the Saints did fumble late, this is a game that was won just like Thanksgiving Day against the Redskins by a strong Cowboy effort.